We Indians started feeling everything of India is bad, everything abroad is very good. I believe culture of all countries are good, but we have to adapt it to my... Why should I forget my culture? So education is if I am forgetting my traditions and my culture, then I am not educated. I will strengthen. I will, yes, the negativities I will not take. But I should be very, very proud about And it is here that the parents get involved because 80% of education happens at home, not in school. School will only give direction. I will give a reason for that also. See, some of us will be Hindus, some of us will be Christians, some of us will be Muslims or Jains. So our religion is different. So our home practice will be different. Then some of you will be Tamilian, some of you will be Malayali, some of you will be Kannada, some of you will be Punjabi, some of you will be Marathi. So the language will be different, practice will be different. So every home will be different. But in school, all children will come. What the school will do? Take a middle path, right? So can the child, uh, school start giving all those individual things? It is impossible. So therefore, education will have to happen at home. And education has nothing to do with money. A person can be very poor, may not have money, will have lot of values in education. And specifically in India, our value system is so high, whether they are rich or poor, we all have lots of values, which honestly no other country has. I spent six months a year traveling across the globe and I'm doing it for the last 40 years. So I actually get to know what is happening and I don't only move with the high society. I will move with the villages of India, in the tribals as well as abroad. I circulate all. Primarily that is my passion. So what I have started realizing is that a person who does not have values, a person who does not have his base, how will he rise? It is, can we make a building on the 10th floor directly without having the pinth and the ground floor? Not possible. So we have to have our base and that base is going to be given by parents, nobody else. So therefore you have to start, ma'am you can actually sit down, yeah. no, because I talk for half an hour, no? <laughs> you'll get tired. I have to talk for half an hour, they've called me from Mumbai, no? If I don't talk, they'll shout at me. And now that you have got it, you can't even go out. <laughs> you have to listen to me. Okay. So, uh, I coming to this, that um, this, uh, not only as a psychologist, psychologist education is one thing, but I am also a father. I am also a grandfather. And I have, today I can very well say I am a damn good father, which you can't tell. You will know what kind of a father or mother you are 25 years later. But I am certified as a very good father because I have only one daughter who is brilliant in everything in professional even in her father-in-law mother-in-law also keeps on praising you know it is very difficult not from the mother-in-law to get certificate you know but she's got so they say she is very good so I naturally me and my wife we feel very good that we have done something so it will come to you later on so I'll tell you during this process my daughter is now 40 years old so this 40 years, what mistakes we made, what blunders we made, what we learned, because we all become parents first time, no? So we have to learn by experience. But one thing is, you must listen to your mother as well as your mother-in-law. Don't think they are old and outdated. For parenting, that is very valuable. To listening to the elderly ladies, elderly fathers, because they have a lot of experience. That we should take. Something, how many of your children are in Mont? Raise your hand. Huh. So, if your children are in Mont, I will share something of mine, I suddenly remembered. Your child sleeps with you in the bed, no, obviously now. Till the child is not sleeping in a separate bed, where does the child sleep? The child should sleep between the father and the mother. It should not be father, mother and the child, never. The child should sleep in the mother. Now, what happened is when my daughter was born, my mother told me, put your child to sleep in between. Now, I was a psychologist even then because I was 29 years old. But the psychologist did not apply. I just, because my mother said, I did it. I'll tell you some an experience. When she was six months old, I used to sleep on the right side of my daughter, my wife on the left. And um, when she was six months old, one day me and my wife, we went for a wedding. We came back at 12 o'clock at night. So my mother put my daughter to sleep. You'll be surprised, you know what happened? The moment both of us lay on either side, my daughter started turning towards me and then turning towards For half an hour she kept on doing. Then the psychologist in me started realizing what was it. Do you know it is called psychic vibe. The child did not know that I am the father or she is the mother. But she knew these are the two people who sleep next to me. 
and that is where self confidence of a child starts then i realized how much my mother was not a psychologist but she was a brilliant experienced mother because we were six brothers she brought up six sons so she knew what it was so this is what actually happens when now is your child sleeping in between the two of you which is very important that you need to then you must chat with your child you must talk you must sing songs doesn't matter even if you are basura you know you know you are going and ah, but this all right and that is one then you must tell stories and this is the age already where you must tell stories but unfortunately to the no parents tell stories and you were if i ask you do you chat with your child do you do you talk to your child all of you are nodding i'll tell you now nobody is doing you were doing it till your child came to school the day you put your child into school you have stopped chatting you know what you have started only questioning i am asking all the mothers think back the first day of school till then what you did all that you did but the day you have put your child to school the child comes back have you eaten your tiffin first question second question tell what teacher taught third question show me the notebook so you have started only questioning you don't chat any more and you know what is happening by the time child is 5 or 6 years old he is learning to speak lies he will not eat the tiffin he will throw it out and show you the empty dabba so you have taught the first lesson how to lie number 1 so it's important to chat with your teacher i always tell we must talk nonsense when you talk nonsense sense comes you know now there is uh, specifically in delhi mumbai hyderabad you know what the children tell me in hindi they tell me mummy bahut pakati hai you do understand the meaning of pakao is cooking mummy is cooking me all the time because what the mummy does same sentence ten times over you must study you must study you must do this you must do that only do 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 don't do, 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 do they are fed up they don't want to talk to mother anymore and the mother actually starts negating herself so you should talk you will notice teenage children do not want to have dinner with the parents some of you those of the children have grown up you must be experiencing they don't want to sit if you tell them come we will have dinner together no mummy you give me my plate i will sit in the other room and i'll see you know why they don't want to eat because the moment they sit the father will ask so how are studies going on you are going to your tuitions all night or not bas he is fed up he does not want to hear all this no but we are constantly i am mean, agreeing the parents are worried but if we keep on do day in and day out you look at all of us only no don't we all need space see the ladies when your husband is on tour how happy you are no you are not cooking only no no lunch cooking i will eat anything chale i don't want to cook or mother in law just gone to the temple how happy you are for 45 minutes <sighs> freedom we husbands are also so happy when you are on tour we don't have to hear the bickering of the wife and 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 everybody is wanting space so the child also wants space so we need so we need i always say talk nonsense why because the child will then start responding i will connect to it to why the child will come into that will become a little serious so before that what are the stories are you telling your child are you telling stories of fairy tale kings and queens today we are not saying you know what do we do today we say you have watch tv now mickey mouse donald duck switch it off and go to sleep you know what's the danger we are killing the imaginative skill of a child uh, 8 years ago in delhi there was an international psychological congress i was representing india you know what we came to the decision 70 years from now the world is not going to have scientists world is not going to have good cooks fashion designers because all this needs creativity even a scientist needs to imagine without any cannot become a scientist so if we are not allowing the child to imagine and look at this how many of you are working in corporate house what is it that you are told all the time dream and dream big right as a corporate trainer we are always telling all this 35 40 50 year old you must dream you must dream big but that's for goal but the child who is supposed to dream you are not allowing the child to dream aren't we doing that so the child should be allowed to dream talk to him about king and queen why king queen and queen it gives class 
Look at the, all the ladies sitting here. Didn't you, uh, you are, your uh, grandparents or mothers have told you stories. So that, you know, one day a prince will come on a horse riding tadbuk, 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 tadbuk and will take you away. Who took you away is different. But you all dreamt, right? We all men, didn't we dream that there will be a beautiful princess sleeping. I will go and change the gold and silver wands either side and she will get up and give me the garland. Who gave me the garland is a different issue. But we all dreamt. The dreaming is a must. We must allow the child to dream. So tell them stories. I will again tell you how important, why it is, why am I insisting on stories. I will connect. Second story is, do you talk about your childhood? We don't talk about our childhood to children. But you notice your parents did talk to you about their childhood. Think back. Because if you don't talk, the child does not bond to the family. Why do these children do not have tie up? You will notice all teenagers, 13, 14, 15, 16, across India, they do not want to come home till 10, 30 at night. They do not want to. They have an excuse, coaching class. But they have no bonding. You give them, we give them good food, clothes, technological hi-fi gadgets, but the bonding is not there. Bonding has to be made. And you know, the 20-year-olds do not come home till 2 o'clock in the morning. We as counsellors, we keep on getting these cases. Now, why do they don't come? Because they don't feel the connectivity with parents. Parents will have to connect. And it is our responsibility. Why so? Because today's children are far more exposed. They are getting much more exposure than you ever thought. So that is why you must talk about your childhood. How naughty you were. How much spanking you were getting. Whether you had raw mango. You had tambourine. You know the games you played. Kho Kho, Kabaddi. Today nobody knows. I will tell you the other thing. Uh, the madam and all are very upset with all of us. Because I am also in the CBSC board. Uh, connected to all this board. I am not a member, but uh, connected to all this. So, you know, CBS and ICSC board, what they have done, we have put um, indigenous sports into the curriculum of a school. You know what is indigenous sports? It is Kabaddi, it is Koko, it is Langri. And now imagine, these games are actually being to be played at home, right? But today we don't play at home. What is seven tiles? No child knows anything. So we have put it in school. The school has to teach. Now there is a burden on the teachers. Because when these children are going abroad, when they are 20 years old, they go and talk about rugby. Rugby is a foreign game. It is not an Indian game. So the university is there, tell them, you are talking about rugby. What's your country sports? None of them do. They say cricket. Cricket is not ours. But we do not know our own sports. So it's important that we parents speak about. When you speak about your childhood, this will automatically come. Now how this will help you also? When he is surfing, if he finds it interesting, he will surf seven tiles. He will serve what is Koko, so he will not go to the negative sides. See the repercussions that is going to happen. So it's very important. So do your children know the names of their grandparents? I'm very sad. I go to the interiors of our country and I find that today's children do not know the names of our grandparents. It is a must. That's the heritage of a child. The grandparent may be poor, may be illiterate, may be uneducated, but they are the grandparents. So we, they, the child must feel proud about the grandparents, whoever they are. It's very important, but today it is not. So when we are not having family pride, then we will not have school pride, what we call is alma mater. Then we will not have, you know, in the corporates, most of the chairmen keep on asking me, so there is an issue of, all of you must be knowing this, accountability is an issue. It's a major issue. I always tell them it is not the issue, issues at home. The youth has not been accountable to their own family. They are not belonging to their own family. How they will belong to the company where I am working for 8 to 10 hours and getting salary? I cannot. So ownership or accountability, loyalty has to come from home. And then comes national pride. So we don't have anything. So it's our responsibility that my child grows into that. I would like to share with you. Do you know the United Nations services? 92% of top executives in the world are average students. They are not merit listers. They are not scholars, including me. I had 43% in 10th standard. But I am at the helm of affairs. Because when there is all round development, that person grows. And for you, what you did, you have chosen an elite school. Ryan International is an elite school. Say New Horizon, Vidgur, DAV, they are elite schools. So you have already taken the first right step. 
of putting them into a elite school. That means all down development is there. But this part also has to be done. So talk about your childhood. The child will connect. The third story will be innovative stories. You have to make stories and keep on telling the child. You know, yeah, like you have to talk a lot of lies. A lot of people say, oh, how can I tell lies to the child? I'll tell you all of us speak. The moment your child is fourth, fifth, he doesn't study. So you are not studying at all. At your age, I was coming out first. All parents were first. No parents ever came second. Is it possible? But if you tell that you failed, then the child is gone, no? So you are speaking like as it is. So you must. I like to give an example of my granddaughter. My granddaughter is five. In between, uh, it's my daughter's daughter. So we don't meet every day, obviously. So she had developed a habit of screaming, you know. For everything, ah! And she would shout. So one day I was at home. So I told her, I'll put you to sleep. She said, okay, Dadu, you will tell me stories. I said, okay. So when I put her to sleep, I told her a story of, I said, there are four girls called Tuntuni, Munmuni, Sapna, etc, etc. My daughter's, the granddaughter's nickname is Mishti. She said, Mishti was there, Dadu? I said, yeah, Mishti was also there. So, I, she said, what were they doing? I said, they are all screaming, you know, all the time. Mishti was screaming? I said, no, no, Mishti is a good girl. She was not screaming. Then I said, uh, you know what happened after that? Tuntuni started shouting so much, screaming all the time. She said, what happened then? I said, then she lost her voice and never she could speak. I ended the story. One very important thing when you tell her truly, don't tell the moral of the story. Children don't like it. Do you know? <laughs> I started noticing from then on my granddaughter is not shouting anymore. <laughs> because she realized very indirectly, if I shout, voice will go away. So I should not. So like this innovative stories, we have to connect it. That's very important. This is the side of the story. Next is, how much do you as husband and wife communicate? Do you communicate? Um, and what I mean by communicate, when I, after marriage, I don't tell anybody, do you love your husband or do you love your wife? Because after marriage, you know, but just, there's nothing called love as such. You know, it's all adjustment. But still there is love because mutual respect plus mutual understanding, which is love. That we start. So it's important that uh, do you fight? Do you argue, husband and wife? How many of you? Raise your hand. Good, 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 good. Those of you don't, you all are mentally sick. <laughs> you, I'm not talking about physical fight. I am talking about arguments. It's very important. If you argue, that means there is communication. But now again, something I learned out of this. You know, I'm 42 years married. So 24 years, me and my wife fought, argued. For last few years, you are not fighting, you are tired. You must be noticing your parents also, they don't fight anymore, you know. He is looking this side, she is looking that side, like that. Uh, so when we were fighting, I realized we were a joint family then, six brothers. So naturally, where were we fighting? In the bedroom. And uh, when do you fight? You have to fight when the child is at home, because during the day, the husband or the wife both may be in the office. Child is also in school. You cannot come in the evening, say the child, you go out to play, we will fight. You can't do that. No, it is not possible. So we were fighting. Then I realized my daughter is getting all wrong impressions. You know, She used to be very frightened. Out of just error, trial and error, I started telling my daughter that, um, not as a psychologist, I realized that it worked. I started telling my daughter, I do not fight with your mother. My wife's name is Radha. I said, I fight with Radha. So you can never insult your mother. Luckily for me, my wife was also telling, I do not fight with your father. I fight with Tushar. But Baba is Baba. Later on what we realized, actually unknowingly, by default, we were interpreting our fight. And my daughter grew up to be very attached to me as well as to her mother. As a beautiful bonding started growing up. Which is so, you will fight, but interpret the fight. Because for the child, both parents are equally important. Unless and until you are a single parent, that's a separate issue. But both parents are important. And it is therefore important to interpret that we respect each other, which is a must. There can be ups and downs. There will be difference of opinion. So this is the other part. Now the serious part for which I had started, I will be talking very bluntly, very frankly. I hope you will not mind because it's very important today. I am going to talk about adolescence. You know what adolescence is. Now those whose children are in Mont 1, 2 and 3, in another 7 years, your children are going to come into the stage. So you need to know. And those whose children are already 5 years, 6 years, 7 years old, they are already into, in that mold. What 
excuse me, what do we mean by adolescence? When a girl is becoming a woman, when a boy is becoming a man. So what actually happens? We all now know hormonal changes takes place. Now the thing is we normally think all this happens at the age of 13. But it is not. Uh, I'm using the word, don't mind. Uh, because I believe these uh, topics are, they are not vulgar. We make them vulgar. If we, uh, thank you. Okay, I'll keep it here. It will form. It, it, yeah, I'll take it later. Thank you so much. Um, it, it, we make it vulgar. Since I am going to talk to you, I will not use those slang words at all. It is not necessary. Because we all are adults. We know what are we trying to talk about. Okay. So when we see, uh, at the when does a girl become a woman? When she develops breasts and she has periods, right? Do, can any of you tell me which is the latest age as of today a girl is getting her periods? Anybody? 12 or 13. 10, 12. No. Do you know it is 7? You need to know. Now, I will give you the reason why it is 7. It is 7 is that the girl is not becoming a woman, but she is having a period. That is because the food that we eat, na, vegetables and fruits, they are chemically fertilized. The medicines that we take, there are drugs. I am not saying all girls get it, but there are a number of them. So what is going to happen to us as parents? We will be panicking. Na? By God, at the age of seven. So we will stop every activity of the child because that has been our tradition, that you are growing. But what we have to remember, she may have had period, but she is still seven year old and she is a girl. She will grow to be a woman only after the age of 12, 13. So we have to start tackling the child like that. Similarly, a boy, what happens to a boy? His voice changes up. They could be from thin, he starts becomes harsh and a male voice. Then he starts getting moustache. Like. So we know that he is changing. And we know because of this, the academic comes down because they are in a very confused state. Now in CBSC, ICSCs, we have put it as life skill programs and state board, we call it a personality development programs. So there is adolescence, there is a chapter which an outsourced person comes and in seven standard, they talk. We talk to the child. Now it is important for the father and mother to talk. Talk means you should not have inhibitions. Because I'll tell you why you should not have any mission. Whether you talk or not talk, the child is seeing it in the net. And the child is getting wrong ideas, no? So, can anybody love your child more than you? Not possible. So, we need to explain to the child that this is the change. I'm giving you an example. When we talk in the class, you know, boys and girls are all sitting there. We tell them what period is. You know what we tell them? I said, how many of you have seen how a chicken is hatched? They all say from eggs. So we said naturally, women also get eggs in the stomach. But suppose we don't keep eggs in the refrigerator, what will happen? They said it will rot. I said, does our stomach have refrigerator? They said no. So we tell them, so those eggs that are there in the stomach, they also get spoiled. And once in a month, they are flushed out. That's period. Isn't it a very beautiful thing? But then I cannot look red and pink. You know, you know what? I'll tell you what period is. You know, but actually, you know, if I start doing all that, then the child will know that there is a lot of masala into that. So we have to talk eye to eye. See, if the father can't talk, let the father and mother be present. Let the mother talk. It doesn't matter. Anyone. But only both should be present. That is why I said, right from the day one of the child, if you keep chatting, then you can. Can you suddenly tell the child, come, I will tell you now, you have gone to my adult. What is period? You can't suddenly start. Na? It takes time. Because we are also, we are Indians, we have our sanskar. Suddenly we just can't break everything. So you have to keep the channel open. So I say, do not be fr be a friend to your child, be friendly. If you become friends, what happens? The dignity of the father and mother goes off. So similarly, never compare your child. Do not tell your child, why are you like this? Your friend is like this, your cousin is like this. We always believe in psychology, no two people are alike and can ever be alike. So each one of us have our own plus and minus. And that is how we have to, I like to share again, a lot of the, I give a lot of credit to my parents. See, if my father would have been alive, he would have been 115 years old. 95 years ago, he was MS from USA, but he was very enlightened. I remember in sixth standard, annually I was asked to recite a poem of 20 lines. I spoke six lines and I forgot. And then, and my teacher took me out of the state. And I had cried. I had forgotten about this. Somewhere in 1999, that means when I was 50 cross, I received an International Oratory Award. And that day, you know, I remembered that when I was thrown out. 
So when I was thrown out, I was in standard six. That means I would be about 11 years old. And I get the award when I'm 50 plus. I remembered what my parents told me. They told me, why are you crying? You may not be able to have been able to say the all the 20 lines, but the six lines you spoke, we are so proud of you. So we can make, parents can make it. We need to encourage our child. I have been an, I told you, I have been a below average student in academics. But my parents said, you have tried, right? That's okay. Then I really, I had maturity because I started my institution at the age of 1, 5, 15. That means they identified I had leadership quality. To the same institution is global. But I, I got my maturity. So in BA, I got honors. In masters, I used to second class first in the university. I started realizing if I don't do it good, I can't do the next study. If I don't score this much, I can't do PhD. So they put the maturity in me because they appreciated us. I'm not saying you're not supposed to be strict. You are supposed to be strict. We need to interpret like... Uh, I find today no mother or no father, we never interpret each other. Like when we were small, possibly when you were small, you also heard that your mother would have told you, your father works very hard to earn money. Think about it. Do you tell that to your child? Today most of us don't. But we need to tell because they need to know money doesn't come easy. Whoever is earning money, father or mother, it is hard earned. So that's the respect that the child re realizes. We need to tell them that it is. So we are supposed to say no. I remember my daughter once, she had, I'm otherwise very well to do, but my brothers are, were there ten little more. So my daughter wanted to go to executive class in the flight. I said, I can't afford. She said, but cousins are going. I said, their father can, I can't afford. Simple. Your father can afford only economic class. I can't. It's that simple. Why should I lie? I don't have the capacity, so I don't have it. And my daughter needs to be proud of me the way I am. It's very important for parents to imbibe that and without comparison. So in adolescence, what happens is, if you start talking right from the beginning, you can address the issue. What will happen when they talk to you directly? Then they are, their doubts are getting cleared. Though they are no longer confused. And then you appreciate the child. Encourage the child. And then he will start. Like, for instance, whatever is cooked at home, you have, to, you have to tell stories so the child will start eating. Today's young parents, what we do? You don't want to eat this? Okay, I'll make another one. I'll make another one. So what are we doing? We're not making him adaptable. We have to, and we grow up. Isn't it that we have to keep on adjusting everywhere, whatever comes in? So the child will have to keep on doing it. Now coming to, if I come to academics, what we need to see? That the child is working hard. Means as parents, we are becoming a support system. The moment you will notice what happens is the child comes to 7th standard, everybody starts. Now you are in 7th, you have 3 more years. 8th, you have 2 more years. I mean, this is too much of a stress. The school has to create stress. But the parents should not. But let it go. We will all pass. We have all passed. So, so what's so big deal? Uh, I, I like to share all of with all of you. All the boards, whether it is a state board, it is a CBSC or ICC. Of course, you should not tell this to your children. You know, there is a scheme. Nowadays, you must be noticing they are getting 100 out of 100 percent. I am not talking 100 percent result. They are scoring 100 marks. Why that is coming in? Because every board has a reservation of 20 marks, which comes from the school. So you need to see that your child is regular in school and tell all the assignments. So the principal is compelled to give 20 out of 20. Naturally, if the child is not regular, principal cannot give 20 out of 20. She may give 15, she may give 14, she may give 18. But if you have got 20, that means how many more marks he has to get? 80. Right? Now, if he is more or less an average student, you know, all the three boards has a rule that we, if in prelims, whatever they get, we give 15% more. We are lenient. So if the child in prelims has got 70, in final board is already has 85. So in other words, 15 and 20 of school, 35 marks he already has. So he's already passed. Now all that he has to do is get another 50. So he gets it 85, which is not a major difficulty. But what happens is we start creating a lot of stress with the child. And then in the process, the child does not interact, does not want to study anymore. We need to be, the child will definitely have mood swings. 
and it's more stringent not only for studies it is also for adolescence issues because of that then he has a mercy why they have now and why we did not have if you remember when you were children you had a lot of games to play you had a lot of extracurricular activities so today most of the modern cities we do not have extracurricular activities there is no scope there is no field there is no games nothing so what you should do fortunately as i said you people have put your children into elite schools what does elite school have what's the difference between an elite school and other school elite schools have enormous activities when you have activities allow your child to participate in each of these activities there are two advantages one is if your child is shy you know not social through the school activity the child will tend to become social second is the child will be i went to a school in faridabad i like how the other children were performing i saw that they were performing and i found two boys and two girls of ninth standard were conducting the choir like this yeah. at the end of the function i asked the principal as how they are doing it she said when they were in fifth standard when they are participating i noticed the teacher noticed so he got them groomed now it's a fantastic thing a ninth standard boy and girl you know conducting choir so that means what if they participate their quality is being seen it is identified if it is identified they can be groomed come to the seriousness of the other side what are we wanting that our children should be successful that means get a good job get a lot of money if that is important and be very happy if you really look at it my institution we are number one in india for career guidance you know today there are so many multiple careers one slight example i'll tell you suppose your child loves cats and dogs you don't have to make him a veterinary doctor because he may not be wanting to become a doctor but you know what you can make him you can just make him do graduation ba arts with psychology you know what he's going to become he's going to he can become a pet psyche the salary of which is arts arts ke date mein is 60000 monthly if a 22 year 24 year old is getting 60000 rupees monthly as a pet psyche isn't it a beautiful profession because he's happy to do what he wanted to do do you know that if somebody takes arts and becomes a graduate still he can become a pilot as far as you are concerned only science ke baad you can become a pilot but today there is another course of course that costs a little bit more i think 10 lakh rupees additional fees and then you appear for that and you become a pilot which in one year you recover so there are ample of options so if the child is good in something his hobbies and interest we need to pursue so allow your child to participate in the school the entire induction program is aimed at what we as parents should be doing at home because as i said school will then be able to take it forward the base has to be prepared from the family school teachers also constantly get groomed they constantly i think today only ma'am was telling me how many years ago 7 8 years ago 7 8 years ago when she was in bangalore she said she attended a teachers training program under me i was i didn't remember she said sir it was 7 8 years ago you had come to take our training and all that i didn't remember but all teachers are also constantly because that's a mandatory for the government because teachers also need to change you know they have also to evolve now coming back finally the last leg is you and the uh, school what happens when you put the child into the school so we get very fed up with one child the teacher has 30 to 40 in one class so teacher is also a human being so she naturally they, they, it's not that everybody will be perfect everywhere there could be mistakes but if there are mistakes we need to come and point it out to the teacher or to the supervisor or to the principal and share it we have a right to give our suggestions but we need to cooperate why because your child is your child till the child came to the school but they the day you have put your child to the school the child has also become the schools because when the child excels school is very proud so are you it's a joint venture both of us will have to come together to make our child the maximum so school will try to do what they have to do within naturally because uh, most of the schools are very expensive rains i think has more than 141 schools across the globe and so naturally there is lot of expertise lot of expertise how to take the children forward how to uh, the multiple exposures that international exposures they will get why in international exposures that is because it opens the horizon 
nothing more. That means it just makes them more ad adaptable. They become universal citizens. That is what is the approach about. So we essentially need to uh, interact with the school, that is the teachers and the principals. So to sum up, I will end my talk here. To sum up, what is it that we require to do? First of all is communicate with my child, chatting. Do I create a level where my child feels free to talk to me? And I feel free to talk to that. I must respect the child. You know, I have this, I learnt it about 26 years ago from one ninth standard boy. I had asked him, whom do you respect? He gave me a brilliant answer. Most of us will answer that I respect my parents, my grandparents, my teachers or me. You know what he told me? He said, sir, those who respect me. I really gave him a hug. It is a fact. Those who respect me, I respect that person. If I insult somebody, that person will never respect. So, and this is again, not me. You shout at your child, alone is one thing. But if you shout at your child in front of everybody, the child will later on tell you, Mommy, Mommy, you shouted, it is all right. But why did you shout it in front of everybody? Because the child wants to say that I also have a self-respect. Don't be little me. So that respect if we give, the trust we give it on our child and if we keep on interacting and not compare the child with anybody, I don't think there will be any issue as such. Ups and downs are a part of life. Struggle is constant. I will end with a sentence which inspired me when I was 15 years old by Mrs. Rose Kennedy. Mrs. Rose Kennedy was the mother of John F. Kennedy. You know, John F. Kennedy is the used to be the 33rd president of the United States. He was shot dead. So when she was interviewed, that how do you feel your son has been shot dead? She answered, because she's a Christian, she used the word cross. And it still rings in my ear. She said, I believe God will not give us a cross heavier than we can bear. Either we survive or we succumb. If we survive, we become a better, broader and more understanding a person. The lesson I learned out of it, life is going to give me jewels. And that's a part of life. That's a part of growing up. I will not succumb to it. I will face the jolt. Find options. Rise above that. That's the spirit we need to inculcate into your child. Failure does not mean that the person is not going to be successful. Success has nothing to do with fame and name alone or money. Success has got to do a lot of with contentment and achievement. So thank you ladies and gentlemen. Thank you ma'am for inviting me.